unluckily, they go on for pages and pages and pages. Because what they did was they, they, they have a, a, a pretty big report on the future of personalized medicine. And you can see that I've stolen the slides because I, uh, they spell personalized the wrong way. And, and <laughs> um, where's Derek? Hey, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. It's, uh, right. Well, <laughs> you would say that. Um, uh, I grew up in Canada, so I'm schizophrenic. I, I can't even remember what the right way to spell that is. So, um, uh, so they have a report that has 80 recommendations, and I think they read each one of those 80 recommendations over the, first, over the course of several hours. So they introduced us to the, the project. They, they had speakers from outside, and then we broke away in the afternoon to think about implementation, and, then, and, and, and I joined one of the implementation groups where uh, I don't have much to report because basically they just said there aren't enough people here to, and there's stakeholders missing, and, and uh, at the end of the day, they have an implementation plan. I will telegraph the answer, and that is that if you go to the European Science Foundation website, it looks like the European Science Foundation itself is being wound down. So I'm not, I'm not sure how relevant this is, although this is a huge amount of work, and it has some really nice ideas about what personalized medicine uh, is or likely to be. So I'm going to run through this quickly using their slides and some of my comments around them. Uh, so the notion is that there's different responses. This was from, I can't remember the, the British guy who, ran, who runs the phenotyping part. Um, uh, they generated a report and then the idea is that that report generated another report. This is the cover sheet from the other report and, and these are the things that they want to accomplish. They've had many, many meetings uh, to sort of discuss various aspects of this including sort of technology meetings disease specific meetings, big picture meetings, a stakeholder meeting, and then I was at the rollout meeting, which was in January 2013. So the, the, the graphics are this, that the, the centerpiece is the patient, or is the European Union citizen. Uh, and, and that's uh, where it starts, and there's layers on top of it. So one of the layers that they're very interested in, and this resonates with some of the things that we're trying to do or thinking about things that we would like to do within things like eMERGE, and that is sort of redefine disease uh, in terms of the genomic markers, the biomarkers, the expected responses to drugs or other therapies. And then, so they have that center, uh, front and center. This quote, and you'll see the slides are all the same way, the quotes, these are their quotes, and these are sort of my notes around their quotes. So they, sort of the idea was to move to sort of proactive and disease prevention. You know, a lot of uh, thinking about data handling and about models and decision-making processes. So um, thinking about trial designs, thinking about N of 1, which I think is another way of, of, the, of thinking about the sort of rare disease initiatives, uh, targeted populations, looking at developing and deploying biomarkers, engaging regulators, so I'm glad that we have regulators here. Um, the creation of European-wide and wider networks. They were very interested in the idea of creating networks across Europe or across the world. I'll come back to that. And then they, they think uh, about biomarkers, including imaging, linked to specific phenotypes, uh, and, and linking, linking that to the drug development uh, initiatives. This reminds me that we had a big debate about what genomic medicine was going to be, and this is clearly a vision that goes way beyond what we've defined as genomic medicine here. But it, it is personalized medicine, not genomic medicine. So then there's this word that I learned called interdisciplinarity, uh, and, and interdisciplinarity uh, is sort of, this is, this is the definition, and, and there, there was a lot of thinking about sort of what the patient should be thinking about this. Uh, uh, avoiding using the wrong kind of language, uh, and, uh, and then the idea of personalized medicine being more than genomic medicine. Uh, they had this uh, idea of, uh, and there's a graphic that I just didn't include in this slide set of, of Google Maps, sort of Google Maps has m multiple layers, and you could sort of think about this as multiple layers of proteomic information, environmental information, uh, drug exposure information, sociocultural information, all sort of layered on top of, uh, of, of each other to give a sort of an accurate picture of an individual, again, the individual at the, at the center of all this. 
Uh, so you have to have IT tools. They, they thought, talked a lot about the cloud and, and talked a lot about who was going to get access to this information, whether it was patient, whether the information would, show, would follow the patients, whether the information follow the doctors, and, and, and grappling with in issues like that. The electronic medical records, uh, they were very clear that the data follow the patient, that sort of the, the patient moves, the data follows uh, from that. Uh, I'm, uh, Given that they have sort of nationalized healthcare systems across Europe, it, it still wasn't clear to me that if you were in Holland and moved to Belgium, or better yet, Holland and moved to Macedonia, that your records were going to follow you in a way that was going to be useful. It was an issue in Europe across borders. They didn't talk about the fact that they had different alphabets as well, uh, but they were very interested in sort of figuring out a way of having electronic medical record systems where the patients would sort of own the data and they would move with the patients. Um, this is the, uh, the mantra is the patients have a right to manage their own data. It's not clear that that was universally accepted. And then there was this idea that, you know, some of, some of the data ought to be used for the common good and, and how to do that was not very clear. And then they worried about education just like we do and that was healthcare providers and the public and that would have to be lifelong and, and, the, and the education would require uh, biological underpinnings as well as uh, 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 education in, in specific areas like IT. They have 80 recommendations altogether. Um, so uh, after that, so that was sort of the, the morning was going through this, this, that set of slides and those slides that recurred over and over again with, with uh, a lot of words that I've taken out for you and for me. Then, then they had speakers from other places. So uh, I spoke for 10 minutes about what we're doing in Emerge and, and uh, in the genomic medicine working group. Uh, somebody, I can't remember who it was, spoke from the European Commission uh, and they had a nice cartoon and they had this idea that the European Commission was, you know, needed to invest in this. Um, not clear whether that was just words or whether that was actually going to happen. The Canadians were there uh, and they were very impressive, as Jeff has already alluded to. They've sort of, they seem to have their acting gear a large investment uh, from multiple stakeholders, and, and they hadn't announced the projects that they were going to do in, the, uh, in their genomic medicine space, but uh, uh, they were, it was, I went to dinner with them afterwards and ate mussels, and, and it was clear that they, uh, they knew who that we were going to be, but they weren't allowed to talk about it, and uh, I think I understand why now, but um, one of their slides was this, so I thought I'd show this, and that's that the Canadians are not, a, it's not a big country, They've managed to sort of organize themselves well, but the other thing that they've done is that they've created a lot of alliances uh, with other places in other countries. And, uh, and that was a sort of theme that I thought resonated throughout the meeting, that, that uh, what you can do in one country in Europe was insufficient, what you could do across Europe was getting there, and what you could do if you had allied Europe and the United States, or Europe and the United States and Canada, um, those are the main partners. Uh, they hadn't thought about uh, China, Japan, those, those are harder partners to do, but, but these are the kinds of things, these are the kinds of, uh, uh, of alliances the Canadians listed. So the breakout groups were sort of to, to think about these questions, and as I said, I, th I found the big breakout groups not terribly uh, uh, helpful, the, uh, and then they have sort of phase one, phase two, phase three implementation, and the phase one is, sort of, I think, sort of mostly where they are uh, in here. They're not uh, beyond that right now. So the uh, this is the last slide. They, they, the notion was they're going to finally publish the they're going to publish a final report. They're going to do more uh, publications. I don't know what the cost conference was. I should have just taken this bullet point out, but I thought I'd put it in because I, I think the cost conference must deal with money, but I wasn't wasn't sure about that. Uh, they had the launch and implementation event. They had their the key stakeholders and an action plan presentation. They really that the, the key point was to go not just across the. Uh, 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 Europe, but uh, across the world, this is the this is the uh, G28, I think, um, and they specifically mentioned you know American sites as well as Canadian sites. And then the last bullet point was who's going to take all this over now that the European Science Foundation is going to sunset itself. So that's so it's it was a pretty uh, broad vision of what personalized medicine might be. I don't think it had any surprises, but it was a pretty comprehensive view, and it was very patient centered. And, I, and I'll just sort of leave it at that for, and I'll try to answer questions. It's been a long time since I was there, but I have notes. Great. Questions for Dan? Yes. Do you have any idea um, 
if there's an investment that's being made across any of these 80 recommendations, or is it, you know, no, is no, <laughs> I don't. Uh, and and, and the, the last point really drives it home, I think. So the, the, the European Commission wants to do it. Um, the Dan, could you use your microphone, please? Oh, oh, sorry. The European Commission wants to do it, I think. Um, and I hope I'm not misstating it. I don't, I don't think I sort of snoozed when they sort of said, well, we're going to put 500 million euros into this, and, and I wasn't paying attention. They, they, they did talk about, you know, investments that have gone on over the last five years in the personalized medicine space in, across Europe, not, not, uh, uh, not country-centric, but through the European Commission. And there has been an investment of, I'm going to say, a billion euros, something like that. Uh, over the past five years, it wasn't clear how, how, you know, where the commitment was to go forward with that. They were very worried about the current economic climate, and they were sort of hesitant to, to go further than that. Other comments? Great. All right. Thank you much. Okay. Last but not least, so Jeff is going to tell us a, a little bit about what we might do in, uh, in the fall with the other international groups.